If I think I've got the best hand then, mm -hmm. I tend to bet the turn, and they check the turn, right. I tend to bet the turn there as a default. So the question that we've been asked is, often when I raise with a strong hand pre-flop, mm -hmm. and then let's say I get one caller and I have the effective button. Right. So I like the flop and I bet. Right. And then the turn comes and I still think I'm good, but now I'm scared because lots of things, because he did call right. and now I'm, I'm worried. And so a lot of times I tend to, to check back. Right. What guidelines should I think about? Yeah. About whether I should better check. What I tend to do is if I have one pair, like an over pair or top pair or even medium pair. Right, and that's, and that's kind of the idea. Is this is yeah. a one pair situation. You right. haven't flopped a set or anything, but right. I mean, it's like your a last really, position. and it's a really good one pair. Right, and you're basically C betting. So your range in their mind is still pretty wide, right? right? What I do is I bet and get a vibe right then. And generally speaking, if I think I've got the best hand then, mm -hmm. I tend to bet the turn, and they check the turn. Right. I tend to bet the turn there as a default. Okay. You know, with one pair. Sure. And what are your what are your reasons for your default being to just <laughs> right. barrel number two? My absolute main reason, and this might I might be over afraid of this, is given a free card that that beats me. Right. You know, that is like the greatest mathematical catastrophe that can happen. So that is fundamentally why I bet. Is, so your your fear is giving a free card when you're ahead. Yeah and yeah. letting the hand that's behind get there. Right. So like if I got ace king and I got a pair of aces, I might check behind there to give a free card because it's less likely to beat me. Like if the guy's got queen jack with no pair and he hits a pair, I'm good. Right. But if I've got ace 10 and I flop top pair with a 10 hmm. and I bet the flop and he calls, now I'm going to bet the turn there almost every time because I don't want to give an easy uh, out to just two overs. That's, that's really what I'm protecting against, two overs. Right, okay. Or so, one over, really. Right, yeah. and, and I, think, I think that's something that we all, we all struggle with, right? Because mm -hmm. one, one example you and I were just talking about was, let's say that you have ace-king. You raise, and the big blind calls, mm -hmm. and the flop comes king-10-4, okay. rainbow. Right. And they check, and you bet, and, right. and they call. Right. And you're feeling pretty good. Right. Now the turn is a nine. Okay. And you're like, well, I mean, king nine just got there. And, yeah. and what if he flopped top two with king 10 and 10 nine and queen jack and now I'm drawing dead. Right. You know, and right. I'm scared now. Yeah. And so my check. Yeah. Right. Well, I, it's, it's easier to bet there if you know you're going to fold to a check raise. That's, that's what I do. It's like, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. well, that's it. You know, so, so when I'm betting there with my, I mean, it could be, I might have pocket sixes, mm -hmm. right? Nothing to hit the flop. And I, and I see bet, and the guy called. At that moment, I still think there's a decent chance I have the best hand. Mm -hmm. So when he checks the turn, I'm very likely to bet there again as my last money in the pot. Right. You know, I'm not going to bet the river. I'm not going to bluff. I'm mm -hmm. not going to do anything. If he calls, I'm done. If he check raises, I fold. Right. But I think that that, gets me through the fear muscle of like being afraid to bet the turn because I have such a marginal hand. Right. But even if you don't have a marginal hand, let's say that you have ace king. Right. Right. And then you have, you're like, well, what if I get check raised? And this is, this is where things get actually really easy. And here's why. Low stakes players by and large don't bluff raise hardly Ever. at all. <laughs> Ever. <laughs> right. 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 That, gives you enormous freedom because yeah. you've got ace king and the flop is king 10 four and you bet and they you know they check and you bet right. and they call and the turn comes a nine and now no fear because when they 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 check right. and you're not afraid anymore because one of two things is one of three things is going to happen you're going to bet and they're going to fold a lot uh -huh. right because right. they had yeah. Whatever. Right. Right. Because back door and, and this, that. Back yeah. door this, that, and they didn't trust your flop bet anyway, and exactly. blah, blah, blah. And yeah. okay, now they're done. Right. Or they had like, you know, five, four, right? And, and boy, that pair of fours 
you know, they, yeah. they promptly put you on ace queen and, and called you or whatever, right? right? The beautiful thing is, is that when you get ready to bet the turn, if they check raise you, you just fold. Right. You and it doesn't it. matter whether it's pocket aces or it's ace king. Yeah. You're not good enough often enough. Right. You're certainly not good enough to call a river bet. So right. you have to anticipate that coming. Right. That's coming. Right. And the beautiful thing is, is that you've really protected yourself against, say, 5-4. You're not giving 5-4 right. two cards to get there. Exactly. And let's say that he has some, like, Jack-10. Okay? Mm -hmm. So he called your bet on the flop with his pair of 10s. Right. So now he's got a pair and a gut shot. Right. He's got five plus. He's got nine outs against you. It's bad if you give that hand a free card. Yeah. Terrible. Right. Yeah. Whereas, and he might call. I mean, he might call a bet right. with his with his nine outs. Right. So, in that case, you're actually picking up huge equity. Right. Well, he also might call because he actually has a pair. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, right? he might have hit in his mind. He might have you beat. Exactly. Right. So the point is, is that in general. And, and there's no absolutes here. Mm -hmm. But to a first approximation, if your opponent seems like the typical opponent who is not going to check raise you as a bluff, mm -hmm. then right. if you believe you have the best hand on the turn, on the turn, value bet your pair, value bet your pair. Right. Right. And, right. and as you say, maybe it's correct to do that with pocket eights. It's, it's a little, it's real a little problematic there because now if he has a pair of tens, he's got you beat. And now you're gonna have to decide if you're gonna fire a third barrel and Well, no, the idea of betting the eights there is that you're never firing a third barrel. Okay. That's okay. it. You're done. You know, and you are gonna sometimes get better hands to fold. Right. Occasionally. You know, there's value in betting in general. Yeah. Because there is fold equity. Mm -hmm. Right? And like what if you've got eights and he's got sevens? It's like, okay. That's, the, that's another hand I don't want to give. Even though it's only two outs, you know, I don't want to give the, the two outs to that. And yet, back to the ace-king, the reason that it's even more important to protect with the top pair, top kicker, because that's a harder hand to fold on the river. Yes. Right? So you really want to get accurate info. Yeah. And you can only get that by betting. Let's say that you bet the flop, and he calls, and he checks, and you bet the turn, and the mm -hmm. river is the deuce of unicorns. You're going to bet again? Wait. What? Say that again? If, if, if what? So he check calls the flop. Right. The turn's a nine. Right. And he, and he check calls. Right. And now the river is a, a complete brick. Oh, and, and he, check, and he checks again. Kicker? And he checks again. Oh, this is where I, I rely entirely on Spidey Sense. Okay. I mean, I think I tend to bet there more often than not. And my basic reasoning is, if I had him beat on the turn, mm -hmm. which it feels like I did, I'd probably still have him beat. Mm -hmm. Very easy to fold a check raise on the river. It's so, <laughs> and that's, like, the yeah. number of check raise river bluffs that yeah. you're going to see right. in all but the jiggiest of, of games right. is yeah. zero. Right. I did one last week in Vegas. I actually did a check raise. <laughs> 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 but, but the thing is, it's bad for me because I got away with it, and now I'm going to suspect everyone is doing the same thing, but they're not. <laughs> you, it's so but rare. No, nobody has to Tom. If Tommy does it to you, you've got a problem. Anybody else does it, you, you, you snap full. Yeah. The point is, is that check raise river bluffs are so rare. Right. And that, that by the way, we'll, we'll talk about this more, but position is so valuable there. Yeah. Because he's checked. Yeah. And now you get to decide if you're going to check it down. And because he doesn't check raise rip, bluff on the river ever. Right. You're right. essentially free rolling your bet here. Totally. Yeah. Every once in a while, he's going to show up with a scared two pair. Yeah. Or whatever. Right. But as Andrew Brokoff says, poker is not about sure things. Mm -hmm. A large percentage of the time, and he's got king queen or king jack, right? He's going to or you ace off. ten. Yeah. And the tendency for low stakes players to not 
check raise bluff uh, is one of the things that makes the game profitable. You know, there's a lot of talk now about bluffing frequency and that it's a mistake to not bluff enough, and that that's one of the fundamental mistakes that low players, low stakes players make. Value betting the turn is how you take advantage of that. Right, and value betting the river. And value betting the yeah, river. Yeah, and right. getting that. And the thing is, Tommy, is, is that that third street of value mm -hmm. is humongous. Yeah. Because you've been building a pot all along. Right. And because you're last, you get to pick your price. Exactly. You know, you might, if, if you think the guy was just hanging on with pocket sevens, hoping you would check the river, mm -hmm. then if there's 200 in a pot, now the correct bet is like 40. Exactly. But you get to decide. Right. I mean, that's you. Exactly. You get to set your price or mm -hmm. you get to set his price. Right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and that's the 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 expression these days is targeting mm -hmm. specific hands. Let's say if you think he's got a king, queen, king, jack kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Well, then, you know, you, you might go for 100 bucks. Right. You got, might go half pot. Exactly. You for aim for what he's most likely to have. Right. right. Yeah. And and if he's and here's the thing, if he's got a busted draw, he's going to fold anyway. Right. Right. If he's got a set, he's going to check raise you and you're going to fold anyway. Yeah. But don't sweat that. <laughs> yeah. Those right? things play themselves. Yeah. And if he's got ace 10, maybe he's going to pay off 70 or something. And you just basically have to decide on the river, you know, he's never going to check raise bluff me. No. I'm just figuring out what I kind of think he has and what right. he might be willing to pay off. And, and that's my bet. bet. Yeah. And then what will happen sometimes is let's say you value bet with, um, you know, top pair third kicker mm -hmm. and he calls with top pair second kicker and wins. Mm -hmm. And you think, oh, I should have checked. Right. No, it was the right play against his range. He just happened to have one of the hands that beat. He just happened to have you notched. Right. And I will tell you what, when you, you start firing those third barrels, you know, people, you can see them. Mm -hmm. Right, they check and they're reaching for their cards. Yeah, you know, to yeah, turn yeah, them yeah. up. Right. right, they're waiting for the check check. Yeah, you know, here's another subtle but really important long range a, a meta game thing about firing that third barrel is. A lot of people will call the turn hoping to get the free showdown with their one pair. Right, and if they think you're the type that's going to play A, B, C and give them that free showdown with the one pair, they're more likely to correctly call the turn because they're going to get that show free showdown. Right. But if they see you firing on the river more often than not when you're in there, mm -hmm. they that's going to keep them from playing that way against you. You know, go, going for that free showdown so you're going to get even more bluff equity. Yes. on the turn. That's people right. People aren't going to call you with their one pairs. Your bluffs work far more frequently on the turn because you're betting the river. Because they're yeah. terrified of that river bet coming right. in. Exactly. There's a there's a special circumstance of, of this situation that I want to talk about because it comes up all the time. You have ace king and the flop is king eight four with two hearts and you mm -hmm. don't have any hearts. Okay. You got spades, okay? They check, you bet, and they snap call. Okay. Okay. And the turn is a three is a black three of clubs, and they check again. And people will pay again. This is. A broad generalization, mm -hmm. but by and large, people will overpay for their flush draws. On the turn, yeah. On the turn. Right. Okay. Right. Now, flush draw, we all know, is four to one against uh -huh. with one card to come. Uh -huh. In their world, it's 50 50. It gets there or it doesn't, <laughs> right? Yeah. And so mm -hmm. it is catastrophic to give a flush draw a free card. On the turn, not just a free card, but uh, this is where betting half pot can can give them the right drawing odds if you're going to pay them off too. If you're going to, so them you off. not only need you need to bet, but you got to bet a fair amount. Yes, and if there's a hundred dollars in the pot and the flop is in, and the board is king ten eight three, and there's uh -huh. a flush draw out there, yeah, a bet of sixty or seventy dollars is like right on. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they will pay it. Yeah, with their flush draw. And you're making huge Sklansky bucks mm -hmm. right. by, by then, betting there. And then on the river, they hit one pair, mm -hmm. and then they still might pay you off. Because and then they, they still, right, they still might pay you off. Right. And, and I think our conclusion is, as a pro friend of mine puts it, keep betting until they tell you to stop. Yeah, that's a good line. And, right. and because 
they are almost never bluff check raising you. You can just keep betting. Mm -hmm. And then when they check raise you, you're done. Yeah. But until oh, go ahead. one more great thing about uh, folding to the check raise is how you do it. Okay. If you hem haul around a little bit and fold, that's bad. If you fold fast because you knew what you were going to do, they don't know you folded top pair. Right. For all they know, you had absolutely nothing, and it was a stone cold, it was, it was, zero it was equity bluff. Pocket sixes. They have no way happened. of knowing right. that you laid down a real hand. Hey, if you like what we're doing here, don't forget to like our videos and subscribe to our video channel. Right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What do you think, Lee? Is that a good idea? Yeah. <laughs> yes, please please click the like button and subscribe and we look forward to seeing you on future videos. But wait.